Um, I want to tell you a story, and that's kind of how I want to couch my little time here with you. A young guy came into my office probably, oh, maybe nine months ago. He had come to a luncheon that I do down in the Park Cities area uh, with about 300 guys on Wednesdays. And he said, John, he said, I came to the first luncheon I'd ever been to about, um, about a month ago. And he said, here's my situation. The guy's 37 years old at the time. He just turned 38. He said, my dad lives in Charlottesville, Virginia. He's 70 years old. He went to the University of Virginia. He's brilliant. He has cancer. And he's an atheist. And so I said to my buddy Rob, I said, well, man, I said, uh, that's got to be breaking your heart. He said, it is because I know he doesn't have very much longer to live. And I said, uh, Rob, I said, would you like me to fly up to Charlottesville and spend a day with your dad next week? And he said, oh, man, that would be great. So wait, this was on a Friday. I said, you contact him over the weekend and tell him who I am. And I'd love to come up and spend a day with him. And if he says yes, and I'm on a plane, I'll go up there. On Monday, I come into my office, and there's an email from Rob. And he said, talk to my dad over the weekend. I said, dad, time is growing short. We need to talk. My dad came right back with an email, and he said, all right, I'll fly to Dallas on Monday. So a Tuesday... At 10.15, these two men, one 70 years old, one 37, were sitting in my office. And I didn't know if I was going to like this guy or not. Sometimes these guys can be pretty negative and sarcastic and soured on the world. But when this 70-year-old atheist walked into my office, I loved this guy. He was really a neat guy. Very warm, big smile on his face. So we sat down. And after we kind of got acquainted a little bit, I said, Why are you here, Bob? He said, well, I'm here because my son wanted me to visit with you. He said, it'd be important for me. I said, second question, Bob. I said, uh, what do you believe? He said, well, I believe in the inherent goodness of mankind. I kind of chuckled and said, well, you don't know some of the guys I know. <laughs> and he laughed. And the third question was this. I said, Bob, I said, do you believe there's a God? He looked down and finally came back up and looked at me and he said... Not sure about that one. So what I want to do in the next 10 minutes or 12, 15 minutes, whatever, Jason, just pull the plug on me when you want me to stop. Give me a one minute warning and I'll wrap it up. But I want to tell you what happened in that room. Because I believe probably today there's some guys that are here. You've heard what the other speakers have said. You kind of understand what they're saying. But it may not all fit together. You hear about Jesus. You hear about a Bible. You hear about junk in your life. And you hear all that stuff. And some of you are church going guys and you get it. There's some guys here that this is kind of a foreign language to you. It was a foreign language to Bob. This 70 year old man. So let me tell you what I tell I want you to kind of pretend that you're in my office and, and you're sitting there listening in as I talk to Bob and the 37-year-old son, Rob. And this is what I said. I said, Bob, I said, first of all, you need to understand that the first question where we begin is not talking about God. The first question we have to ask is, how in the world do we get here? I said, it's the question of existence. And if you're talking to a knucklehead like a Bob who doesn't believe much of anything, you don't start with the Bible and you don't start with Jesus. You've got to start someplace else. You start with the question of how in the world we get here. How did everything that you see out there get here? And I said, Bob, there are only three possible answers that mankind has ever come up with. And I'm not going to give you all the detail. I'm just going to mention them to you. I said, Bob, the first one is that everything came out of absolutely nothing. And I pointed to my wall and I said, if this picture on the wall were a black blackboard, what this first possible answer says that everything came out of nothing. It came out of that. But I said, no thinking person holds to that because it doesn't answer any of the specific questions like, why am I, why am I the way I am? Why can I communicate? Why can I think? Why can I feel emotions, etc.? It doesn't explain anything, so nobody holds it, but it's a possible answer. The second possible answer is that everything that exists has always existed, but with possible cycles within. In other words, formula-wise, it's time plus chance equals existence. This is where Darwin would fit. This is where the whole evolutionary thing would fit, etc. And I told him one quick story because I'd studied some of the, th the things about Darwin's life. At the end of his life, on his deathbed, this is what Darwin said to his friends. He said, it is, I have a, been a proponent of the theory that everything eventually evolved from an earthworm. 
But what disturbs me and depresses me at this moment on my deathbed is this. If I came from an earthworm, then how in the world can I trust myself to come up with a theory that explains the existence of mankind? And he died depressed. Second possible answer. The third possible answer, I said, Bob, is that there's a personal beginning. And he looked at me, now this man's a smart man. I said, there's a personal beginning. And I said, what do I mean by that? I said, there's a great verse in the Bible. And this is the first time I really mentioned the Bible in the conversation. I said, in this verse it says, man has been made in the image of God. After the likeness of God, he has been made. So I said, if you look outside, Bob, and look at all creations, you flew in here yesterday. I said, um... And you just kind of noted the beauty, the massiveness of this planet. And you look in the sky at night. I said, if there is a God, what would he have to be like? He said, well, he'd have to be powerful. He'd have to be creative. And so he named four or five things. And I said, well, you know, if you turn to the first three chapters in the book, uh, in the Bible, it says that he communicated. He had emotions. He was powerful. When he spoke, boom, things came into existence, etc. Now I said, isn't it interesting? Bob, what are you like? I said, you're relatively smart, aren't you? He kind of laughed and said, you're smart. You communicate. You feel things. You have emotions, etc. So if you take what God is like and you take what you're like, there's a match. And this atheist of 70 years, this brilliant man, it was almost like here was something new he had never thought of before. So I let that settle with him for a second. Then I said this. Tuck that away, Bob. Let me go to the next thing. The next question is, why in the world is the world so screwed up? Why are we so screwed up? Why is there a 50% divorce rate? In fact, I'll be down in Fort Lauderdale in two weeks speaking. Or actually, yeah, two weeks speaking. And in West Palm Beach County, there's a 62.1% divorce rate. I mean, it's screwy. I said, so why are we so screwed up? Why do people do the things they do? Why, etc. So now this is the part I want you to get here.